film critic Ali Arkan is here with me in the studio to dig deeper into these scandals. Welcome on our show, Ali. It blows my mind how one report can make dozens of women come out and speak against Weinstein. Why did it take them so long to voice their anger? Well, um, there are a number of reasons for this, obviously. The first one, um, I don't think we should be questioning uh, the timing of, of uh, when they came out because obviously they're opening themselves up to incredible public scrutiny and judgment and this is the world, unfortunately. This is a, uh, the, the odds are stacked against them, um, opening themselves up to a lot of public shaming, basically. And uh, a lot of people who find themselves in this position don't want to come out, don't want to actually make public uh, the ordeal that they went through purely because uh, they are afraid that um, people might not believe them or they will face repercussions. And in this particular case, obviously, that was, that was very much uh, like the sword of Damocles dangling over their heads. So um, we should really champion them for coming uh, out with these allegations anyway. Um, as for why this whole thing really blew up now, I'd hate to be the sort of cultural commentator who links everything to Trump, but I'm going to have to link this to Trump. Um, because uh, it is definitely emanating from this general miasma of misogyny that has surrounded Trump during the uh, campaign and his presidency as well. So it's all coming down to politics. It is. It is very much coming down together. It's very much that zeitgeist that's affecting it. And especially fourth wave feminism, which has been a very strong vociferous force in uh, women's liberation for the past five, ten years. It, all that coming together and now is the time. And there's a, pragm a, prag a pragmatic reason, rather, for this. Um, he's no longer as powerful as he once was. Well, tell me the effect that all of this has had or is going to have on Hollywood itself, because he's a huge name. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, he got fired from his own company. I mean, that's the, that's the first effect. And, and, there's, uh, and hopefully there's some peace and, um, uh, and uh, strength in numbers for all the victims as well. But generally speaking, this is very reminiscent of the early, the late 80s, early 90s, where the language of race, for example, changed in the United States with the Crown Heights riots and um, uh, Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee's film, and then the uh, Rodney King case, where the way people started talking about race, the language of race really changed. So there was a, an epochal uh, shift. And this seems to um, signal something similar to that. At least, you know, it's not the end of it, obviously. This is, this is merely the beginning. Uh, this, you know, to quote Churchill, this is possibly not even the beginning of the end, but this might very well be the end of the beginning. And uh, that, that sort of slow, gradual change will begin um, with this. Well, hold your thought there, Ali. Um, we're going to be back with you very soon. Until then, let's see what awaits us on the program. We look at the situation in the South Korean entertainment industry. A leading Bollywood star speaks out about her experiences at the hands of molesters. Well, Ali Khan is still here with us in the studio. Ali, can you please shed some light on previous events that have um, been exploited on sexual harassment as well? In Hollywood, I'm assuming. In Hollywood, yes. Yeah. Um, well, it's as old as Hollywood itself, really. I mean, all these moguls, and, and this is the interesting thing. Obviously, Harvey Weinstein was a mogul in the old-fashioned sense of the word and whatever that entailed. So um, you have these stories going back to the earliest days of Hollywood, people like Luby Mayer and Daryl Zanuck, and these horrible um, stories that uh, we can't really even talk about, start beginning uh, to uh, talk about. Um, in a family-friendly program such as this. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it does go back to it. And um, you have stories from a, a lot of very famous actresses, obviously, uh, legends, really, uh, going back, and uh, actors, too. So uh, this 
culture of abuse, and not just sexual abuse, but uh, harassment and emotional abuse, goes back to the very early days of Hollywood. And it has been a systemic problem. This is the interesting thing. It is, a, it, it is uh, all encompassing. Well, it's not just Hollywood that yeah. faces these problems. It's a worldwide issue. And I really want to ask this. Do you think that they don't receive the consequences that they should be receiving if they are found guilty? Um, well, in the case of some of these uh, historical personalities, you know, Basically, you know, they didn't really receive the, the, the judgment, the public judgment that they really did deserve, obviously. But there's something else uh, about it as well. Um, it, is, it is such a difficult concept, this sexual abuse, uh, for a lot of people to accept. And unfortunately, uh, you might take issue with with the name, the resistance, obviously, this movement of, of women against uh, Trump. But there is definitely something against the patriarchal order. And, uh, and you know, demolishing the patriarchy is, is something that we should all be talking about, not just women or men or liberals or whatever. I mean, this is, it, it, it is a systemic problem that we need to be looking into uh, completely annihilating. Well, that's all the time we have left. Ali, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today. Thank you.